Welcome to JHEP's lesson on atomic structure. The first thing you need to know is that this is only a theory, to be very honest. It's like a hypothesis. It's not an actual fact as there are no microscopes able to actually view this atom yet. So we've based it on all the stuff we're going to learn in A-level chemistry and came up with this, um, with this theory that of how the atoms are situated, how the subatomic particles are situated around itself. So this is how it currently looks like. We've got the electrons spinning all around the nucleus. Okay, it's orbiting it. And it's orbiting it in shells. As we can see, there are two shells here. It's orbiting in shells. And the relative mass of an electron, this is an electron by the way, the relative mass of an electron is 1 over 2000. In the exam you can write 1 over 2000. If you want to be specific you'd write 1 over 1861. This is only a relative mass. This is not a mass that they've actually weighed like the electron. They have not weighed an electron. They're comparing it to something. And what are they comparing it to? They're comparing it to the neutron and the protons. And this is a neutron over here. And the relative mass of a neutron is 1. So Scientists are basically saying that if um, if a neutron weighed one gram, an electron will weigh a two, one two thousandths of one gram. It's really that tiny. And the relative the relative weight mass of the protons is also one. So they're saying that these two subatomic particles weigh the same. And you try and you understand that as we go along. So back to the electron. Its relative charge compared to the rest of here is minus one. That means it's negative. That's why electrons and these pictures over here are negative. Because they have um, because they have a negative charge. Compared to the neutrons and the protons, the protons have a positive charge, plus one, and the neutrons have no charge, which is zero. It will be best to write zero in the exam. Also, there is an awful lot of space between the nucleus and the neutrons. When I mean an awful lot of space, it's pretty, pretty big. So moving on, in the periodic table, we have these, uh, we, have, we have elements which look like this, where we have 12C and we'll have a 6 at the bottom as well, if we're lucky. In the OCR pa paper, we will have 6 and 12. But this, at the bottom, is called the atomic number or the proton number also this can this can be the electron number if this is not an ion we'll get to ions in, in a minute but at this current moment, since this is not an ion, as in no electrons have been lost or gained, we can say that this is the proton number and it is also the electron number. So we're saying that carbon has six protons, six electrons so far. This is called the 12 over here this is called the mass number this is 
the proton plus the neutrons. Okay, we do not write the electrons here because we say that the weight, the mass of an electron is negligible or 1 over 2000. So it doesn't really have an effect on it. So we just say the proton and the neutron mass of it. So we know what the proton number is, which is 6 protons. How do you find out how many neutrons there are? We calculate 12 minus 6, 12 minus 6 equals 6. So there's six electro uh, six neutrons here as well. And that goes um, that goes the same with all the other elements in the periodic table. So I'm just turning over to my periodic table right now and I'm looking at um, I'm looking at group two magnesium. And we have Mg 24.3 and 12. When you have numbers like this, we can we can just round 24.3 down to 24. It really wouldn't matter. So we can round it down to 24 and say that magnesium has 12 protons, 12 electrons, and 24 minus 12, which is 12 neutrons. Isotopes. So what do you see different about these two diagrams here? This is the nucleus, by the way. We can see that there are one, two, three, four, five neutrons here. And one, two, three protons here. We can also see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven neutrons here and three protons. Because they have the same amount of protons, we know that it is the same element. Remember, if this, this has got three protons, so the element is going to be Lithium, but if it had four protons, it would be beryllium. Look it up in your periodic table. So, those are the same elements. But, this has got two less neutrons than that. So this is called an isotope, because isotopes are atoms of the same element, with the same number of protons and neutrons, Electrons, I mean, but with different numbers of neutrons. When you have a two mark or three mark question, you should really write this as well. When the examiner asks you to define an isotope and it's a three mark question, you should write this bit here. But if it's a one mark question, you don't really need to write the green bit there. So over here, what is the difference between this element here and this element here? We know that the mass, we can see that the mass number is bigger. And we know that the proton number is the same. And protons are the only ones that weigh something compared to the electrons. So we know that the proton number has changed and um, has stayed the same. That means the neutron number has to have changed. 14 minus 6, because that's the mass number of the protons and the neutrons, minus the protons to leave the neutrons, which is 8. So there's 8 neutrons here. 12 which is the number of protons and neutrons, minus 6, which is 6. So there are 6 neutrons here and 8 neutrons here. So that means carbon-14 has 2 more neutrons than carbon-12. 
you need to compare both of them. You need to write both of them in that sentence, otherwise you'll not get the mark. So these, these are called ions because they are on balance, they are charged. This has lost two electrons because if you think about it, if you have and if you have a playground and you've got a seesaw, you've got a seesaw and you've got, um, let's just, let's just say, I'm going to give a random number. We've got eight protons here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we talk about relative charge here, not relative mass, relative charge. And you've got eight electrons here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If two of them, if two electrons have moved away, this would tip down. And the protons side of it will tip up. So there will be more of a positive charge than a negative charge. And that's what this basically means. This means it has lost two electrons, seeing as it is positive. Protons never go anywhere. Protons never move. Neutrons never move. It's only electrons that move. So that means we have lost two electrons. If we gained two electrons, that means it would not be calcium. So seeing as we lost two electrons, looking at the periodic table, carbon carbon is like that so carbon calcium i mean sorry is 40 right in here 40 and 20 okay i just rounded it from 40.1 to 40 so the proton number hasn't changed so that's 20 protons the electron number has decreased by 2, so it's 18. And the neutron number is the mass number minus the proton number, which gives 20. Just because the electrons have changed does not change the neutron number, 20. It doesn't change the neutron number. And that's it for atomic structure.